everyone and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here my name's Alexa Ray and welcome to a bookshelf tour slash organization video I'm so so happy to be here and I'm so excited for this video if you've been around for a while you guys know that I did this video a few months ago on my channel it just didn't feel perfect the way I wanted my bookshelf to be a few months have passed since then and my book collection has grown tremendously honestly like a little bit too much I've kind of gone off the rails with book buying lately so my book collection has grown ridiculously much since the last time I did this video I decided spontaneously a few days ago to splurge a little bit and I went to Target and bought a second bookshelf I just got this type of idea and energy to rebuild my bookshelf and organize it change things really try and turn it into the bookshelf that I wanted I decided to move all my books and bookshelves into the living room and I'm so happy Happy with how it turned out and I filmed the entire process so that is what we're gonna be doing today in the first part of the video I'm kind of gonna show you guys building the bookshelf and organizing it and then in the second half I'm gonna be giving you a whole bookshelf tour I'm gonna be showing you guys all the books I own and showing you how I organize them all the little knickknacks I put on my bookshelf yeah that's what we're gonna be doing today I'm so so excited because you guys have been requesting an updated bookshelf tour we're finally here the bookshelves are up they're gorgeous I'm so excited to show you so with all that being said let's just jump in to my bookshelf tour. You see her walking down the boulevard. She got the posture of a superstar. She looks so fly in those Gucci slides. Yeah, yeah, I wonder what she hides under her disguise. Yeah, 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 yeah. And all the girls around the world, they want to be Dudes are trying to score like it's fever She lives a double life Puts on a show She's a Mona Lisa Everyone's lining up to see her She's a Mona Lisa Everyone's lining up to see her There must be something bad to feature the beauty goes much deeper Once you get to meet her You see her walking down the boulevard She got the posture of a superstar She looks so fly in those Gucci slides Yeah, yeah, I wonder what she I hides I think it turned out I'm obsessed with the vibe I don't really have the perfect organization when it comes to my book. We're gonna jump right in though, and I'm gonna start right on the first shelf. Like I said, there's not like a specific organization method I use. I really just threw all the books on here and I organize them in a way that like I understand and I get. I feel like to others it's not it's not really organized. So just just bear with me, okay? So starting up here, right on the top shelf, these are basically romances and rom-coms. The first book I have to pull out and show you guys because I do in any video I mention it. It's one of my favorite romances, but it's also just one of the prettiest books I own. It's Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins, the collector's edition for her 10 year anniversary of this book. It's absolutely gorgeous. So it's a hard cover book in this beautiful baby pink. The back is absolutely gorgeous. This is so, so perfect. If you've read the book, you understand this. And then when you open it up, it has this gorgeous pattern. And then the pages are lined in this gorgeous pattern of this gorgeous symbol that is a part of the book. You guys already know, I just have a special place in my heart for this book. I think it's because I read it during COVID and it was just a book that made me so happy inside. It also has this cute little built-in bookmark. Next up, I have to pull this out because I just finished it. It's Twisted Love by Anna Hong. Guys, you guys have recommended me this book for months. I got this back in February of this year. I finally read it and I am I'm freaking obsessed with it. It's amazing, okay? It's one of my favorite romance books I've read this year. And as soon as I finished book one, I immediately went online and ordered the next three books in the series because I just couldn't help myself. I just wanted to show you this because this is a special edition cover as well. I just think it's absolutely gorgeous. Next up, we have The Deal by L. Kennedy. I'm currently reading this. I'm only a chapter like three three or four and it's pretty good so far. I'm still like warming up to the characters. Then we have Something Borrowed by Emily 
Giffen. I have not read this book yet, but I actually originally saw the movie, which is like an early 2000s rom-com. So when I saw this, I got really excited because I really, really love the movie. Then we have The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. You guys know this is another one of my favorite reads of 2022. It's an in-school romance. It's a grumpy meets sunshine romance. It's a fake dating romance. If you've seen my reading vlog for this, you guys, you guys know. You know my feelings about this book and how I am obsessed with it. Adam Carlson is perfection and I am so excited for her second book to come out. Next we have Falling to Me by Mila Gray. This is like book four or five in the series, I believe. I think I actually just liked the cover. I thought it was really cool looking and I'm not one to actually like real people on book covers. I thought like seeing this and liking it was a sign and that's that's why I got it. But you guys actually let me know that this is like book three or four or five in a really big series. So I'm hoping to pick up the rest of the series, but I do hear really good things about these books. So I'm excited to give it a try. Next we have The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. I have not yet read this. I have not yet seen the movie either. I hear the film is really, really good. And I'm a huge Lucy Hale fan. So I really have to jump. I have to jump on that train. Then we have Virgin River by Robin Carr. This is a Netflix show that I've been watching for the past three or four years now. I'm absolutely freaking obsessed with it. I didn't know it was a book series. And as soon as I found out, I immediately picked up book one. The books are a little bit different from the TV show if you're familiar with Virgin. River. On Netflix, they kind of combine everyone's story into one, whereas the books go couple by couple. And book one focuses on Mel and Jack's relationship, which I absolutely love. Very good, very good Netflix show and very good book series. Then we have In Five Years by Rebecca Surley. I have not yet read this book. I hear many mixed reviews on this book. Some people love it, some people hate it. I haven't gotten to it yet. It is a fairly short book, so I'm hoping to get to it soon. Tell me Three Things by Julie Buxom. This was just a really cute and aesthetic book cover. I couldn't help it. And it was also only $6.99, which I thought was insanely cheap for a book. And if you look really closely, it just has like little text written out. And I just, I don't know. I thought it was so cute. I also love that it's like little waffle hearts. Next we have The Paper Princess by Erin Watt. I hear such amazing things about this book series. I'm hoping to read it in the fall sometime. Fifty Shades of Grey by E.L. James this self-explanatory I feel like we all know we all know what Fifty Shades of Grey is. Maggie Moves On by Lucy Score. This is a newer book that just came out. It's a rom-com book. Forever actually sent me all five of these books. So this is Maggie Moves On. This is The Godparent Trap by Rachel Van Dyken. This reminds me of a movie that's on Netflix right now. It's like an early 2000s movie. Basically when like two people that despise each other have to come together and raise their best friend's child. And it's the same idea and vibe in the book that it is in the movie so I don't think there's any like actual connection between the two but it's the same story and vibe I feel like. Then we have As Seen on TV by Meredith Shore. This book kind of gives me a vibe that's similar to another really popular book right now. I can't I can't think of the name though. It's like just like in the movies or something like that. It's basically the same vibe as that book but like TV shows not movies. Next up we have The Trouble with Hating You. It's is very similar to The Hating Game. I haven't read this yet, but the book cover, guys, so freaking beautiful. I love the oranges, the blues, and pinks together. It's just so bright and happy. I'm obsessed. The same type of vibe as The Hating Game. It's like an in-office hating romance. Then we have How Sweet It Is by Dylan Newton. This is like an opposites attract romance. Then we have The Dead Romantics, which I have just recently seen so many people talk about. So many people are obsessed with this book and it's my first time actually seeing it in the bookstore. So I'm super, super excited to give this a try. I actually got it from Target for 20% off. Then we have The X Hex, which is a witchy romance vibe that I am so excited to read. This is going to be a perfect read for the month of October during spooky season. I'm so, so excited. It kind of gives me like Sabrina vibes if you guys are like familiar 
with like Sabrina the Teenage Witch. That's like the vibe I get from this. Then we have A Table for Two by Cheryl Lister. I don't know too much about this one just yet. I just recently got it from Forever. Next up we have The Truth About Love by Maisie Myers. It's actually just sent to me by one of you guys. So thank you so, so much. And this book sounds wild, but also like really beautiful. I'm really excited to give this a try. Definitely gives me second chance vibes and the chapters are absolutely gorgeous. This detailing is just so pretty to me and how like the pages look kind of scuffed up. Then we have The Kiss Quotient by Helen Hong, which was also sent to me in the same package. Thank you so, so much again. This was so freaking sweet of you. This just sounds absolutely adorable and so many of you have been recommending me this lately. So I'm really, really excited to give this a try. I'm hoping to do a reading vlog with both of these. And then the last book we have on the shelf is You've Reached Sam by Dustin Tao. This book has been highly recommended to me for months now. I finally picked it up. It is a hardcover book and it's also just absolutely beautiful. It seems like a book that would really tug at my heartstrings. So I'm not gonna lie, I haven't picked it up yet because I'm just not ready for that type of heartbreak. So now we're on to the second shelf in this bookcase and these are mostly summer reads for the most part. So the first book I have is One Italian Summer. This cover I have to show you because it is absolutely gorgeous. This is also by Rebecca Surley, very popular author at the moment. We have two books by Emily Henry, People We Meet on Vacation, which I'm just, you guys know if you've seen the reading vlogs, not like a big fan of this book. It wasn't my favorite favorite. I have finally decided to pick up another book by her. Give her a second chance on my channel. I picked up Book Lovers by Emily Henry. I think the cover is absolutely adorable. I also love the little stack of books on the back. The storyline sounds really, really cute and it sounds like a storyline that I would absolutely love. So that's why I'm going to give it another try. My only problem with Emily Henry is that her writing style just isn't my favorite. So many of you have said it is like her best but fingers crossed that we really enjoy it this time around. Next we have three books by Tessa Bailey. These are all summer reads. We have It Happened One Summer, which I recently just finished. I am absolutely obsessed with this book. Guys, it is so, so freaking good. I highly, highly recommend this book. It's also part of a series and the next one is Hook, Line, and Sinker. This one follows the story of Piper's younger sister. I haven't read this yet, but I'm really looking forward to reading this because book one was just literally Really freaking amazing and then we have my killer vacation which is also a summary read and I just I don't know I like the vibe of this cover for some reason it's basically about a teacher and like a bounty hunter going to find this person who committed a crime I hear mixed reviews about it but I have I have pretty high hopes for it next up we have Sally Rooney books the first one is normal people which I have read a few pages in I kind of stopped reading it just randomly, not because I didn't like it or anything, but I am hoping to go back and finish it. So many people have recommended this and say it's like one of their favorite books. So then we have Conversations with Friends. So many people say this is like their favorite book in the world. So I'm super excited to give this a try. And then lastly, we have Beautiful World, Where Are You? And I really like the cover of this. I like the title of it. it just sounds like a really cool story. So three Sally Rooney books that I'm going to give a try try. Very similar to Emily Henry. The writing style is just it's a little weird for me. It's a little different but I do hear amazing things about all these books so I am hoping to give them a try soon. Next up we have Love and Gelato, a very cute Italian summer romance. We have Kisses and Croissants which is the same vibe as Love and Gelato just it takes place in Paris. Then we have The Summer of Broken Rules by K.L. Walder. This book cover I am absolutely upset obsessed with. I love the pink and blue together. I think it's so pretty. This book I haven't read yet. It's actually on my TBR list for the month of August. I hear such amazing things about it. The story sounds so freaking good. So I'm excited to give it a try. Then we have The Spanish Love Deception, which is also on my TBR for the month of August. This is like everyone's favorite book of the year, favorite book boyfriend. So fingers crossed. I really like it. I do hear mixed reviews on it. Some people
people say it's like really boring and it's not like their cup of tea, but it sounds like a type of romance that I would really love. It's a fake dating and I think it's enemies to lovers trope. I have, I have high hopes. <laughs> and lastly, we have The Sea Glass Summer. I have not yet read this. This was also sent to me from forever. And then to finish off the shelf, I actually just have a little candle here. And if you are familiar with Barnes & Noble, they usually have a section towards the front of their store, which is all candles and like little knickknacks you can buy. And this is actually a graduation gift, but it is a Jane Austen inspired candle. I haven't opened it because it's just so beautiful and I don't, I don't want to, yeah, I'm one of those people. But I'm just obsessed with the outside of it. I love like pattern. It has like little foil detail. And then on the back here, this is what the candle looks like. And it actually has a quote from one of Jane Austen's books. If I loved you less, I might be able to talk about it more. I'm just, I love Jane Austen, okay? So this candle is so, so perfect, and I think it really brings the whole bookshelf together. Now we are on to the third shelf in the bookcase. This is a very small little shelf I have going on here. Right here is just a picture of Chris and I, and then over here I have six hardcover books. Five of them are actually from Book of the Month from, I believe, April. And then this top one is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, which I have not yet read because I tried to start reading it and again, just wasn't wasn't my type of writing style, so I actually wound up putting it down. I am hoping to revisit it in the fall. I think I'm to a point now where I can pick it up again and really get into it. But these other five books are just from Book of the Month. We have True Biz by Sarah Novick, The Good Left Undone, Like a Sister. I can never see this book in a drives me crazy. And then last but not least, we have Bittersweet. These books are just absolutely gorgeous. I just thought that they deserved a shelf all for themselves. Now we are on to the fourth shelf on my bookcase. And these books, I just, I don't know. Again, there's no like major organization to any of it. These for the most part are more like serious books. That's basically like my organization thought process for this shelf. But first book I have here is Girl in Pieces by Kat. Kathleen Glasgow. This book is super old. I've had this since high school. I don't even remember reading it too much, but this is the cover. It's super like simple and minimalistic. Then we have One of Us is Lying by Karen McManus. This book is highly requested on my channel. It is also a TV series on Peacock, which I hear really amazing things about. It kind of gives me like the Breakfast Club vibes, but if it was like a thriller or mystery. Next up, we have The Silent Patient, which is highly requested on my channel, and I know so many of you are probably so happy I finally picked it up. A few months ago, I was going to pick this up, and I decided that it just looked really spooky and scary to me, so I never got it because I was too nervous to read it. And I saw it at Target, and I just finally decided to pick it up and get it. We're gonna try it out. A lot of you have told me that it's not as spooky slash scary as it seems, so right next to it, we have We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. This book is on my TBR for this month. It's another book that has like really mixed reviews. People love it, others hate it. A lot of people say it's super confusing until you get to the end of the story and it all makes sense and the ending just makes the book perfect. So I'm excited to give it a try, but I'm also like nervous. Next up we have The Lost Children. This is a World War II novel. Then we have A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah Maas. Everyone is raving about this book. A lot of you are telling me to do a reading vlog for it. I'm hoping to read this book during the fall season. I feel like it's like the perfect time. I don't know why, it just gives me like fall vibes, but I hear amazing things things about this series as well as this author. I'm super excited to finally get around to it. Then we have Hush Hush by Becca Fitzpatrick. This book gives me like really mixed vibes. I don't know how I feel about the cover, but the storyline sounds really interesting and really cool. I'm excited to give it a try. It's a forbidden love story. And then next up we have Shatter Me. This book is highly, highly requested. It's a book that I am hoping to read during the fall season. I'm so excited for it. It's a whole 
book series. There's so many books in the series. I just hear amazing things about all of them. So I'm really, really excited to give it a try. Then we have Wicked, which is book one in like a three book series. Another book I'm hoping to read this fall. We have The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. I read this a few months ago. It wasn't my favorite book. It's kind of one of those book talk books that was overly hyped for me and that I just, I didn't really see like the major hype about it, I guess. We have The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. This is a three or four book series. Again, I hear amazing things about this book series, so I'm really, really excited. It's a book that I am going to be reading this fall. Daughter of the Pirate King. This is so freaking cool. It just gives me so many vibes. Growing up, Pirates of the Caribbean was one of my favorite film series. It's just, I don't know. And I've always loved Johnny Depp and Captain Jack Sparrow. This is supposed to be kind of like the same vibe as the movies. After that book, we kind of get into just like randomness books. This has always been my Duchess. It was just released in July. Then we have A Lady for a Duke by Alexis Hall. This is a very like thick book I feel like. This also gives me Bridgerton vibes. I feel like these types of book series always start the same way. It starts with the Duke and then it goes to the Viscount and then it just keeps going and going. Then we have The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. This is just a classic book. I love the cover. We have Mr. Malcolm's List which is being turned into a film. I don't know if it's a film just yet but I do know they are like starting production of it which is super exciting because the book is like super fun. Then we have Pride and Premeditation. This is a Jane Austen murder mystery and I haven't read it yet but this cover. This cover is probably the prettiest cover I have in my library to be honest. Absolutely obsessed with it. I love like the floral detail and I also love that it's a Jane Austen murder mystery. It seems so fun and cool. It's an enemies to lovers type of trope. Basically it's the same idea and story of Pride and Prejudice. Right next to this book I do have Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I'm so obsessed. Barnes and Noble has so many different editions and covers of Jane Austen. The next two books are both by Amanda Collins and it's a lady's guide to mischief and mayhem and an heiress guide to deception and desire. The last two books I have on the shelf are Love and Other Words by Christina Lorne. It's one of my favorite book covers. I think it's absolutely beautiful and I just love like the detailing. And then also The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lorne which is just so beautiful. I'm obsessed with both of these books. This is like a second chance soulmate friends to lovers trope and then this is an enemies to lover slash fake dating trope. And then right on the bottom shelf, I don't actually have anything down here just yet. I'll probably wait till I get like a few more books to put down here. I just have a little stack of vinyls. After this bookshelf, we go to the middle here and I just have this long table and we have a record player. So I feel like it's the perfect spot to put vinyls is on the bottom of the shelf because I don't have books anyways to put there. So I figured we might as well put the vinyls there. We do have a little record player and then next to it we have a vase with some crazy looking flowers right now these are actually flowers from the florist when i went to pick out my wedding bouquet and she just like gave me some of them we also have a little mirror here it's just a round black mirror from target and i just feel like it really ties together this like vibe that I have going on and then from here we move over and we have the second bookshelf which I am so proud of and obsessed with this is where I have my coho books and like a bunch of authors and some of my favorite books I'm just I'm obsessed with this one this is the second bookcase in my tour I have to say it's probably my favorite bookcase just because it holds some of my favorite favorite book as well as my coho collection and you guys know if you've been here for a hot minute you know coho is the queen over on my channel. I'm obsessed with her. We're actually gonna start with the Coho Shelf. The first two books I have of hers are like her mystery books and it's just Layla and Verity. Verity is like a super popular book talk book. I read it in like the beginning of this year and it was like super spooky and twisted. I just like don't know how I feel about it personally. I just thought it was like a really twisted messed up story. I guess it's like the point of like these types of books but I wound up giving it a four star read. I have not yet read Layla. Layla sounds equally as messed up and twisted as Verity. Next up we have November 
November 9th. This book is absolutely amazing. A five-star read for me. We have Reminders of Him, which is one of my favorite Coho covers. It's just so beautiful. I love the colors, the birds. Everything about it is so, so good. I also am obsessed with the storyline. I thought it was so wild, but so, so good. If you're familiar with Colleen Hoover, you guys know she writes like the craziest stories and her characters are just always like amazing and I'm just, I'm obsessed with her. Obviously, you guys know this. Then we have It Ends With Us, which I feel like everyone has probably read. It's like her most popular book, I feel like. I think it's like the book that gets everyone into reading Colleen Hoover. It's actually the first book I ever read by her and kind of started like my coho addiction. I wound up giving this like a four out of five stars just because I was so angry with how it ended. Book two is It Starts With Us. I'm super, super excited for that. Then we have Without Merit. This gives me so many mixed vibes and feelings. The cover is kind of weird. It's kind of spooky to me. I don't know if it's actually like a spooky type of read, but it gives me like a weird, weird vibe. Then we have Heartbones. This is a super popular summer read. A lot of people love this book and like talk so highly about it. It personally was not like one of my favorite reads by her. I didn't like the plot twist in this story, but then we have Ugly Love. This book still has my heart. It's one of my favorite reads. It's one of my favorite Colleen Hoover books. I am obsessed with Ugly Love. I think it is such an interesting and good storyline. I love Tate Collins. I love Miles Archer. Do sometimes I think Tate deserved better than Miles? Yes, of course. I think that's just inevitable in all of her books. I really love their story. Five star read for me. I definitely recommend Ugly Love if you haven't read it yet. All Your Perfects is another really good Colleen Hoover book. It's not my favorite, but it is very, very good. Maybe Someday is another book by Colleen Hoover that I read and I don't, I don't like it. It's probably my least favorite book of hers. Yeah, I just, I didn't, I didn't like this book. I didn't like the trope and the whole idea of it. I thought the music aspect in it was really neat. Other than that, I just, I didn't like the romance aspect of it so the next two books is maybe not and maybe now these are part of the maybe someday series i did read maybe not this is just a novella it's super super short it's like 100 pages this was actually way better than maybe someday it tells the love story of side characters in maybe someday i haven't read maybe now just yet but it kind of brings back all the original characters and we kind of get like a catch-up of what's going on with them it sounds really good and i hear really good things about it i'm just i'm not ready to dive back into that world yet after reading maybe someday next up we have confess which is probably aside from ugly love and hopeless which I'm about to show you this is probably my favorite favorite Colleen Hoover book I love it I think it's so underrated the art aspect in it is amazing and beautiful the romance is so freaking beautiful following that we have the hopeless series this book is so underrated it's so freaking good the storyline is probably the craziest storyline I've ever read from her books and I feel like that says something because her storylines are literally wild. So book one tells the story from Sky's point of view. Losing Hope is book two. It tells the story from Holder's point of view. Book three is Finding Cinderella. It's just a novella. It tells the romance of side characters in the Hopeless series. These are so freaking good. I was at Barnes & Noble a few days ago and I found that Colleen Hoover has just released brand new covers for these books. And then last we have Regretting You. This is really cool and different compared to like her other reads. It's a mother-daughter dual perspective. So we go between mother and daughter in the book and we see what they're going through. Definitely can pass as like a teen romance read. So next up we have Shelf 2. These books some of my favorite, favorite books are on the shelf. Starting right here, we have the Selection series. I only have the first three in the series. Then we have the Bridgerton series. I only have the first three in the series as well. If you're not familiar with the crazy world of Bridgerton, it is a Netflix TV show. I am obsessed with it. Then we have the Summer I Turn Pretty trilogy. This is also recently a new Amazon TV show. I personally enjoy the TV show more than the books, at least for book one. I really liked book one. Book two and three is just 
is super weird and it gets kind of crazy and twisted, but that's for you guys to find out. And then we have To All the Boys I Loved Before. I only have book one. This is also by Jenny Han. It's also a film series on Netflix. Next up, we have The Inheritance Games and The Hawthorne Legacy. You guys know this is one of my favorite, favorite books. It's a love triangle type of trope. It's a mystery and I'm just literally obsessed with the entire storyline, the characters. I'm still personally team Grayson. A lot of people are team Jameson, but I just have this feeling that in the final book, there's gonna be a crazy plot twist between the whole triangle. I just have really, really high hopes and I'm hoping it kind of goes the way I think it's gonna go, but I don't know, we'll have to see. Next up, we have Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan. This is probably my top and favorite read of 2022 so far. I haven't read a book yet that tops this book for me. It's like everything. It's also a book that I'm going to be annotating very, very soon. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be the first book I have ever annotated and I'm really excited. This book is absolutely beautiful. I could not recommend it enough to you guys. It's my favorite romance. The characters are absolutely beautiful. The storyline, the development, everything about it is just so, so good. When I started reading this, I could not put it down. I finished it in like one sitting, I think. It's also one of the top 100 romance novels of all time on Goodreads, so... I feel like that says something, I don't know. So after Archer's Voice, we have two more books by Mia Sheridan, More Than Words and Most of All of You. I have heard a lot of good things about these two books that they are so amazing. I'm so excited to read them because Archer's Voice really is my favorite book of 2022. I'm hoping that those books are kind of similar and I love them just as much. Then we have a Taylor Jenkins read little tour here. I have The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, another amazing book. If the hype is real, it is such an amazing read. I highly recommend it. Then we have After I Do, One True Loves, Daisy Jones and the Six, and Malibu Rising. I hear amazing things about all of these books. I've never really heard anyone say like super negative things about the books. And then right here at the end, we have A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. I have book one, book two, and book three. Good Girl, Bad Blood, and As Good as Dead. Book one was so crazy and good. I hear book two is just as amazing and then weirdly enough I do hear a lot of people say that book three isn't as good they don't like book three as much but we'll see what happens and then we have shelf three this is a very light shelf as you can see and I actually just have my Harry Potter books here as well as Midnight Sun which is part of the Twilight Saga this shelf is still kind of in the process of being done I haven't really decided too much what I want to do with it I like the idea of having the Harry Potter books on here because I think it looks really nice but I'm still trying to like figure it all out. It's just Harry Potter books and then Midnight Sun and then I have like this really cool crystal lamp that has like a light in it. Moving on to shelf 4. This is kind of a mixture of different things. We have some self-help books. We have some poetry. Just a good mixture of everything. The first book I have here is Untamed by Glennon Doyle. This is a woman empowerment self-help type of book. I believe it's also the book that that Adele claims has changed her entire life and outlook on life. Then we have How Lovely the Ruins. This is another just self-help poetry book. Almost Adulting is a book about adulting and growing up. You Are a Badass is a super popular book that a lot of people read during like high school and college to kind of motivate them. We have The Quarter Life Breakthrough, which was a gift. Then the next three books we have are just really aesthetic poetry books. They were pretty popular back in like 2016 and 2017. Book one is her, book two is Flux, and book three is Milk and Honey. I feel like everyone has probably read Milk and Honey. If not in the book form, you've seen it on Instagram, Tumblr. The author is a super popular writer. Next we have The Inn on Sweetbriar Lane. It also has a cute little cat on the covers. And then these next three books are all part of the series, and they're actually pretty similar to the Bergeron series. Basically, we go through the Winchester family, and each book is about a different sibling trying to find love. Then we have two Nicholas Sparks book. One is The Notebook, super popular. I feel like everyone knows what The Notebook is. And then the second one is A Walk to Remember, a real tearjerker. If you haven't read or seen A Walk to Remember, prepare yourself 
because it's a tearjerker. We have the Summer Cottage, which is a summery type of romance. It has a cute little doggy on the cover, which kind of reminds me of Osiris. We have the Beachside Bed and Breakfast, another like cute summer romance. And then the last two books I have are part of the book series, A League of Scoundrels. And I only have book one and book two. It's the same idea as Bridgerton and the Winchester family. You go through the family and watch them find love. Right here at the end is just this like porcelain cactus thing that I've had. I've literally had this for like four or five years. It's absolutely adorable. I just can't part with it. So I just put it right here on my bookshelf as a cute like little bookend. On the very bottom here, I just have some more vinyls. Put half over here and half on the other bookshelf just until I find more books to add to my book collection. I actually have a few packages coming in the mail within the next few days. So I'm hoping to actually fill up these bottom shelves of my bookshelf. Okay, everyone, that is all for my bookshelf tour and organization video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had fun. I hope you're able to take away maybe some new reads and book recs from this video. I tried to tell you a little bit about every single book. Some of them I kind of skipped over because I haven't read yet or don't know too much about. But for the most part, I shared some of my favorite books in this video and I hope you're able to take some away with you. As always, don't forget to leave me any book recs you have down below. I love reading what you guys are reading. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up because it really helps me out. Let's me know that you like these types of videos. You like my bookshelf tours, my reading vlogs, my book hauls, all that fun book related content. And then of course, don't forget to subscribe down below if you'd like to see more of me. I post every single week. I try to post more than once a week. It's basically free entertainment every single week. You might as well subscribe. With all that being said, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you in my next video.